Hey, it's John McBride at Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems, so RMUS.com. That's what we're, we're here in the Thunder Tiger booth at CES 2018. Thunder Tiger, we've talked, you know, you guys have seen a, maybe a couple of videos of uh, stuff that I've posted. Is this company that has uh, developed a coaxial helicopter? Um, and for a lot of people that understand that I've been doing coax, or doing helicopter drone stuff for, for a number of years, but the coaxial design um, ha increases that efficiency. That's a big one. The length that doesn't need a tail boom with a tail rotor, that's that's another large um, advantage of a coaxial type design. And then additionally, the stability and the and the basically duration, how long um, the helicopter does its job is is usually more efficient than most drones. The drone seems a little bit more easier to fly and everything else, but the, these are gonna be more efficient. So this, moving on to more of like a like a higher standard of piloting and capability, yes, you'll probably have to get training on something like this because it is a bit more technical. But let's let's look at some of the things that they're working on as far as this ship and then some of the payloads we have uh, specialized on this particular bird. So on the bird itself, on this one, we have uh, basically a FLIR camera. And that FLIR camera can be seen up here in the front. We can move, we can utilize that, we can do whatever we need to do here. And then down here on the bottom is a is a heartbeat sensor. So being a heartbeat sensor, we're actually in like maybe an avalanche type situation, earthquake situation, anything like that. That's kind of what this is where we're going with this type of design and what is on this payload. But let's look at the UI interface on the computer screen real quick and see what what the drone is actually seeing. So again, a very specialized payload. That's that's probably the big thing here. A very specialized payload. And if we come over here on the UI. Up here, we're able to see thermal coming through, as well as RGB coming through. But we have some smart software rolling around inside of the pod. And the software is able to pick up, we're able to see and pick up um, different pieces of meat. And then there's some outputs that are coming along. You've got a uh, position where the, bird, where the bird is. But this is the really neat part, is right here, where the actual heartbeat sensor, um, which is giving some data and showing it on our UI. There's a portion of where, usually when you're doing search and rescue, or you're doing a type of search and rescue, there's usually a point where, where the pilot has to make a decision. And the decision here would be, I can see an anomaly in thermal, um, I can see a possible person that's balled up or, or whatever, but there is no determination on whether that person is alive or not. So, with the heartbeat sensor, we can hopefully make that determination and move the assets where they need to go. Because, the, again, it's a big drone and we're not sending people and having them walk around in an earthquake ridden space or an avalanche place, we can bring the drone in, get down low, make these decisions, and move again assets to where they need to be. Um, again, with such a high flight time and as well as uh, the stability on such a bird, uh, this is going to be a really neat one. If we just swing up this way, let's take a look up. So, on the setup that's actually by design, we have four 22,000 milliamp 6S batteries that are going to be running on this. Um, they're all put in parallel with each other. There's a single um, rotor mass that comes down, but two separate gears that rotate. And by a backup default system, there's actually two brushless motors, two brushless motors that are spinning and, and uh, uh, keeping that baby in the air. So there's a backup speed controller and a backup um, motor, two, two motors in there. Flight time on this is probably, you're, you're gonna hit probably close to an hour, maybe just even a little bit over an hour, and here's the big one, it can carry 15 kilograms. So that's a big that's a big chunk of number. Depending on the payload, you can do drop systems, depending on what, what how we wanna set this up. There's, there's all different kinds of ways we can set this up. The other thing about it is that Thunder Tiger is also working on, and if we just rotate up here to this actual helicopter that's doing its thing, They've also working on a full-on tether system. So this will be able to push us up to 250 feet and maintain flight for several hours running. What is this good for? You've got LTE connections, you've got communication connections, there's all kinds of things that we can actually run the tether system to be able to carry the weight that is needed, as well as you know having the operation and keeping that baby stable. Is it gonna to be totally water resistance, waterproof? This is something that would probably be um, required later on for an operation like that all day. So we'll see and keep, keep in touch with Thunder Tiger on the developments of this. I think it'll be really an awesome machine. Again, when in Taiwan um, and watching this thing operate, how big it is, it's not gonna be your standard everyday drone. And that's very true. So a lot of education understanding on this bird. So hopefully you guys, uh, 
kind of like a, like like what they're working on. So we'll see what it, we'll see where it goes. Yeah.